Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and welcome to my full review of the white Samsung Galaxy S2. Now, I've been using this phone for about a week and a half, two weeks now. I want to bring you my opinion on the handset. And before I do so, I just want to say thank you to Clove Technology because they sorted me out this handset. If you go to clove.co.uk, you can pick one of these up for just under £500. I think at the time of doing this review, it was £492, and that's for a SIM free, unlocked version of the handset. If you're in the US, you're either going to buy this on contract or for a SIM free one, you're going to be paying around about the $700 mark. Now, I absolutely love this screen. This is a Super AMOLED Plus screen. I'm going to give you a close-up of this. Very good definition on the text. Very smooth fonts, as you can see. Vibrant colours. It is just absolutely fantastic. Now, the colours on mine don't pop quite as much because I've got an anti-glare screen protector on. But believe me, even with that screen protector on, it is so, so impressive. Absolutely fantastic. Now, the other things I like are the camera on the back, 8 megapixel camera. I'm going to pause this video now and show you how this performs for both photo use and also capturing 1080p full HD video footage. So this is being recorded with the Samsung Galaxy S2. It's in reasonable lighting, give you an idea of what the recording quality is like in my studio. I'll let you judge for yourself what you think of the HD video quality of the Samsung Galaxy S2. So I'll let you judge for yourself what you think of that video quality and also the photo quality from this handset. I must say that the photos are more pleasing than the actual video quality. Now in use, I use this for email, Twitter, etc. Let me just dive into TweetDeck, which is available for the handset. And it really is a joy to use on this large screen. Very, very responsive. Uh, good to scroll as well. I'll just wait till this is updated and then I'll show you it scrolling. But look, just super, super smooth on the scrolling. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. You can obviously tap on this top bar here as well to scroll all the way to the top. And it is lightning fast thanks to that dual core processor. I've been so, so pleased with how the performance on this phone has been behaving for me. Let's go back out to the home screen and let's have a look at a game. I've got a game on here that I downloaded which is great fun. Fruit Ninja, of course. Let us go into the game. This is a great game. The speaker works really well. Let's just give you a very quick look at the gameplay. I'm not the best at this, but let's give it a go anyway. You get the idea. Avoid the bombs, cut the fruit, and it gets progressively quicker as the game goes on. There we go. So that gives you an idea. Gaming performance on this, very, very good. The widgets on this, absolutely fantastic. Let me give you a look at these widgets. Let me pull this widget here by tapping and holding, and we place this onto another screen. Let's go onto a spare screen all the way over here. And when we drop it, we can position it perhaps in this top left corner. We can also uh, tap and hold, and then we can position it, or, or sorry, resize it to a different size. So here I've got the option of dragging this out to be full width. Absolutely fantastic. Or we can squash it back down to that small one, say that we want it that size, and then let's just drag it back to uh, that home screen. So we're going to go all the way back. There probably is a quicker way of doing this, but I am going to do it the long-winded way, and we'll drag it back and put it back where it was. So you can reposition and resize widgets. You can put these um, icons for shortcuts onto any home screen. You can gain access to all of the home screens by doing this pinch in, and then we can go to a particular home screen, perhaps this one, and jump straight to it. We get an indication here by numbers as to what home screen we're in. So as we scroll, it changes from one to two to three to four, etc. 
so we get a good idea of where we are on the handset. Applications, very, very smooth scrolling through the applications. And let me go into my email. And then here we're going to just uh, go to Compose. And let's have a look at that on-screen keyboard. So we're going to the Compose Mail here. We've got it in portrait form at the moment. And let's start typing. It comes up with suggestions as we go. There we go, so that's in portrait form. We can, of course, switch it around into landscape and then it's more pleasing to type with the thumbs. We can hold the phone in our hands. So let's do that same again. And there we go. You can see it made one error here and that was where I missed the space button. I suppose that's one of the things that I find hard on the phone. I would have liked this uh, little cogwheel for the settings to be placed somewhere else and just that space bar a bit bigger across the bottom. But that's just me. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love the typing on this and I'm going to discard that message and go back to my home screen for you and let you know some other things about the handset including the call quality. So let's deal with call quality next. Very good call quality, crystal clear on the outgoing call quality, not so good on the incoming call quality. I found it a little bit muffled on the earpiece up here, but certainly the microphone down on the bottom, the outgoing voice, people were saying that I was coming through very, very clear. Battery life. Now, battery life on all smartphones is an issue. With my iPhone 4, I get a day's use out of it, I would say, very easily. With this, a little bit harder to get a full day's use. If you're medium to heavy use, you might struggle getting a full day out of this. I'd say a medium user, with looking at what you're using, a full day is not a problem at all. Obviously, the benefit of the Samsung Galaxy S2 over something like the iPhone 4 is that you can, of course, take the back off and carry a spare battery if you want or you can of course charge whilst you're on the go perhaps in the car or carry a little uh, sort of chargeable rechargeable battery to just give you a top up if you need it there are solutions for most mobile phones that will allow you to do that so the Samsung Galaxy S2 is probably the best Android powered smartphone available on the market at the moment. Of course you've got the likes of HTC and LG, Sony Ericsson etc all producing nice handsets but this is probably the sexiest and a very very good performer. Well that was my review of Samsung Galaxy S2, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all again in the next video.